PhD, uh, I'm a PhD candidate in the Public University of Saskatchewan. It's a really nice weather over there. Um, well, I'm here because I want to explain about my work in Chacras, which is an indigenous agricultural practice developed in the northern Ecuadorian Amazon, and that enabled by university conservation. So, we all know that uh, the tropical forest ecosystem is under a critical state of change. And that's mainly because of unsustainable uh, anthropogenic activities. So what is happening here is that those big forested areas are being changed into environments with less amount of violence, such as agriculture and cattle systems. And that's uh, it's a really big issue here because um, tropical forest uh, covers approximately 50% of the global forest land, so ecologically speaking it's really important particularly by its uh, carbon sink capacity. So as we can see here in this map, those darker areas represent uh, higher values of carbon. Uh, and those are mainly uh, located in tropical ecosystems. So uh, with the deforestation, uh, we are significantly contributing uh, with carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. So um, of, of course, the consequences of that are we can see that in terms of climate change, and an example of that is this temperature anomaly we can mostly see according with this map provided by NASA, and mostly located in northern latitudes. So we can have, have hard winters or warmer summers kind of thing. Yeah, so the way that forests can interact with climate is in several ways. One of these ways are uh, the way that forests can reduce those impacts from climate change, um, basically by mitigating those effects. Um, the thing is that people usually think that only reducing deforestation can reduce those carbon dioxide emissions. But things are more complicated than that. And that is because of two reasons. First, because of plant diversity. Several studies have found that uh, the capacity of the tropical forest for carbon sink it depends on the biodiversity levels contained in those, in those uh, areas. So basically what I'm saying is that biodiversity enhances carbon sink capacity in the tropics. Now, the second reason why this pathway of mitigating climate change is, is complex is because of food security. Several people in the tropics, um, especially indigenous communities, they depend on the forest for survival, for food security. And we know that agriculture is one of the main deforestation drivers in these areas. So we are facing a really big complex issue here. So there are some trade-offs between food security and plant diversity. So because uh, we can work by either uh, trying to enhance that uh, food security capacity of indigenous communities, but that likely means that plant diversity is going to decrease. Or maybe we can work by enhancing uh, or preserving species diversity in these areas, but that probably means that food security for people is going to decrease. So this is a really big complex problem that we're having in these, in these areas. Now, um, talking about agriculture, we know that more than 60% of the deforestation and degradation is associated with agriculture. And one of these approaches is shifting agriculture. So basically that, that means cycles, cycles where people uh, go to the forest, they develop some gaps in those places, they transform those areas in different agricultural systems, they use, they use that uh, forest uh, species of land for a while, and then after that, these people abandon these areas, allowing the forest to recover the original structure. So it's a really good technique for, for producing food. Um, and this, this uh, approach is located, as you can see in that map, all over the tropical ecosystem. And that picture shows an example of that gap. The problem here is that because of the deforestation, that forest may no longer exist in the near future. So people, in order to keep producing food for, the, for the, themselves, they have to keep going with these cycles, probably with forest and recovery process. So that's what we call uh, intensification of the shift in agriculture. Now, um, what are the options? Knowing that we have this problem between food security and, and plant diversity conservation, knowing that shift in agriculture is one of the main uh, approaches there in, in the tropics, do we think that working with agroforestry systems, as you know, that it's a combination between trees, trees and crops, is a good idea to handle this? So, mixing or combining 
combining agroforestry system with shifting agriculture might be a good idea to reduce those trade-offs between um, food security and plant conservation. Now, um, breaking back that intensification of the shifting agriculture, the question here is, does agroforestry can buffer those effects uh, of the intensification of the shifting agriculture, basically in a species conservation uh, and diversity? That's what we want to answer in this, in this study. Um, so that's why I decided to work in the Amazon Basin, which is one of the major <coughs> biodiversity hotspots in the world, especially the northern uh, Ecuadorian Amazon, which uh, several plants and animals live here. So every disturbance can, that happened here can immediately be seen in the levels of diversity that are living here. So that's the area uh, in the northern Ecuadorian Amazon they are surrounded by, by ecological reserves and the, the thing here is that uh, several features communities who are uh, Aboriginal people that live in these places, they develop this shifting agricultural approach. And the, the cool thing about, about this is that when they transform those forest areas into agricultural systems, they leave some trees standing. So that's the key point. So they, for several reasons they do that and they establish some crops underneath that forest canopy. So that's really cool. And that's how uh, they, they call that chakras. Now, in order to answer my question of whether agroforest, agroforestry can, can, can offer those effects of the intensification of shifting agriculture, I decided to work with the most delicious chakras, chocolate. So, yeah, I decided to work with agroforestry based on, on, on cocoa, which is one of the the most relevant crops in this area, among others, of course. And I was able to identify different categories of intensification of the shifting agriculture. So basically, those local agroforestry uh, that came from uh, almost more than 30 years of fallow directly from mature forest communities, those agro uh, local agroforestry systems that came from uh, fallow, system, fallow uh, periods of around 8 to 10 years, and also those global agroforestry systems that came from other uh, land uses with no recovery time. So those are three inten intensification levels from low, intermediate, and high intensification levels. So this is the sampling site. Uh, you can see that in that map. So I established 30 global plots, 10 per each category of intensification level in the shifting agriculture. And that uh, plot that you can see in the corner, in the left part um, shows one example of these plots and then it, this, uh, this contains 10 uh, subplots there to gather uh, the variability in terms of the species diversity. So in, in these plots I measure all of the trees over 2.5 cm in DDH diameter at the breast height and I divide those trees in three diameter classes to, to evaluate whether uh, those, those differences can be seen also in the vertical strata of the, of the trees. So these are some pictures showing that work because I work with, I got help with, uh, from ethnobotanists which, who are uh, indigenous uh, teachers communities that live here, so they, they help me a lot. They are ethnobotanists, they, they know a lot about, about trees, so that was really helpful. And, um, so yeah, so these are some results. And as I was expecting, more intense cycles of shifting agriculture reduce species diversity. So this is a rarefaction curve which shows species diversity uh, in terms of our sample size. And it shows that mature forest communities, of course, contain more species diversity. So when people transform these areas, that species diversity level is significantly reduced, especially with cocoa under high intensification levels. Um, the thing here is when we compare low intensification levels with intermediate intensification levels, those intervals of confidence seem to overlap. That means it suggests that that might represent a threshold point between species conservation and the maximum level of intensification of the shifting agriculture that is about eight years of fallow periods. Now, in terms of degradation of the forest landscape, uh, talking about uh, species composition, it looks like more intensified system also degraded. This, this landscape. As you can see here in this coordination plot, this is basically an analysis of the species composition. So every single point represents one plot, 
in these areas. So the closest they are, the more similar are they in terms of the species composition. So as you can see here in the, in the right pan, uh, side of the panel, those are the plots located in the mature forest. They are very close from each other, so they are very similar. And the points that are going farther away to the left from the mature forest communities, they are more degraded. And that's happening especially in, under, in coco agroforestry with high intensification levels. And that is happening especially in the upper arboreal canopy. So those trees that are over 20 centimeters in DBH no longer exist in those, in those areas. And another important aspect here is that when we compare coco agroforestry system with low intensification levels and intermediate intensification levels, they seems like they don't differ statistically. So that means that again, age years of fallow period seems to be like a threshold point for species composition conservation. Um, another important thing here is that our forest system seems to preserve or uh, increase the chances to fit the species to survive. So as we can see here that all of these categories of intensification shows different species that are, are under endangered categories evaluated by the IUCN and these are some examples of those species. So those are very valuable species to in the market. Um, the thing here is that almost 90% of the three species are still not evaluated by the IUCN. So those, uh, that inventory that I did here uh, shows that, that percentage are not still evaluated. So that suggests that probably if we uh, evaluate those trees in terms of endangered categories, those impacts of conservation for this, this approach might be higher. So that leads us to some final points that, in fact, agroforestry seems to buffer those adverse effects of the, shift, of the intensification of the shifting agriculture by promoting the species conservation. And also, the use of agroforestry in shifting agriculture seems to slow down the degradation of the forest landscape. And finally, agroforestry increases the chances for survival for threatened and endemic species. So I would like to thank uh, all of my, my sponsors and also especially to, the, to those uh, indigenous communities in Ecuador that helped me along with this, with this uh, study. And thank you all of you for listening. Yes, so there are different types of, of, of them there.